Okay, a bunch of people were interested in a run through of how my virtual production sample project works. So I'm going to go through this quickly, uh, maybe not get every little piece of information that you need, but at least most of it. So when you start the project up, you should see something a lot like what's on the screen right now without the tracking information coming in or anything. Now, if I come up to here and do simulate, now we're seeing where the actual tracked position of the camera is represented by this cone. Uh, this hammer represents another tracker that's in the scene. And this mannequin here represents where you want your talent to stand. If you were using this with, you know, real talent after you figured setting, after you finished setting this thing up, you would um, tell Unreal not to render this mannequin anymore. And then this other mannequin is just there as a demonstration of a, a, another virtual object in the scene. Now I'll show you how the compositing system is set up. So what you see there is a look at what my studio looks like with um, no special effects. You can see there's a chair, a real chair and a focusing target and a bunch of green screen material and such. Uh, also over in the corner here you notice that there's a bit of a hole and you're probably going to wonder how I deal with that, I and mean, you'll see that in a minute. Now the first thing that you'll probably have to do when you get this in is you have to set the chroma key color. I've intentionally set it to something wrong, so I can demonstrate that here. So whatever your background color is, it doesn't have to be green. It could be blue or orange or any color that doesn't appear in any of the real world objects that you see here. You can come over here in the chroma key section click on this picker and then you can just move the eyedropper around the color you want to keep. And you can see right now it's already removed all that background green except for what's over here. Uh, now you can set up another color to remove this slightly different shade of green but I'm actually doing something different and you'll see that in a second. So a couple things that you can do here um, in addition to this there's a couple other passes. These will all be turned on in yours, but I wanted to turn them on one by one so you can see them. Um, there's a pass called Erode, which you may not actually be able to see when I click it, but you notice there's a little bit less uh, green fringing around these objects when I turn it on. Uh, Erode just kind of pulls in the chroma key a little bit. And uh, then there's a thing called Despill here, and that you really can't see much of at all, but basically what it does is it tries to remove the green key color that might be reflecting off of other objects in the scene. So now that's the uh, the actual live camera element. Then we have what I what's called a garbage or a holdout map uh, and that layer looks like that. Uh, it's actually a combination of this white panel over here that you see in the scene and another one that's actually slightly below the floor. So what this does is anything in the live video plate that isn't where this white color is uh, will not come through. And uh, that lets me get rid of that other shade of green and the little hole in the wall down here. Then we have a foreground element, which is the hammer over here and the guy that I want to be in front of whatever talent is in the scene. And then there's a background element, which is pretty much the rest of the entire scene. Uh, and when you put them all together, stacking them one on top of another, you get something that looks like this. Now I've got the project running in a viewport, so you can see uh, it a little better. And uh, you can see the different elements here all put together. There's the chair that's out in the green screen room. Um, there's the hammer just hidden behind this guy. And you can see the sel selfie stick the hammer is attached to. Um, there's a tracker right in the center of the head of this hammer. Um, the um, head HMD is still sitting out on the floor. Normally I'd take that away once I'd set the system up. And then we've got our two mannequins, the one in the foreground and this one, which would represent where you want your person to stand. And like I said earlier, you'd probably turn him off once you got everything laid out properly. So a lot of people have asked how this works and why you're able to walk around in, uh, in front of the camera and not have it fall apart on you. Uh, and also how can you pan and tilt the camera. Um, 
And the way this works is basically everything here is in the, exactly the same scale and setting. So it's all what you might call one to one. Everything in the virtual world is measured in centimeters to actual size and so that it'll match up with things in the real world. Uh, and the camera for the real world and the camera for the virtual world are both set up exactly the same. The same field of view, camera lens type, f-stop, focus settings, and everything. So since the two, uh, the virtual world and the real world cameras are tied together with trackers, uh, they both do exactly the same thing, so everything just matches up. Now all this uh, can work whether you have trackers or not. Uh, if you don't have trackers, you just have to take out your tape measure and measure where everything is and make sure that the real world and the uh, virtual world both match. Um, the most important thing is to get your camera set up the same in Unreal as it is in the, the real world. Now the camera used for this composite is this one up here called Comp Camera Rig or at least it's part of it anyway. Uh, and if you go into here and select the camera component, uh, you'll see that there's some settings for the type of camera. Uh, in my case, I've got a DSLR sized camera with a 35 millimeter lens on it. Uh, so I've selected a film back setting of 16 by nine DSLR. Uh, if you've got uh, a different kind of a camera. There's a bunch of presets here, uh, or you can just stick the measurements of your sensor, which you should be able to find in the spec sheet, into these fields. Um, for the lens, I've set it to be a zoom, even though my lens really isn't a zoom. Uh, and uh, then I have it set to autofocus on my talent guy here, uh, so that the Unreal view will look the same as uh, the view from my camera and it'll have the same focus. You notice the foreground guy is slightly out of focus because he's so close to the camera. Um, a little further down here you have um, things like the f-stop 4.5 which is the same as on my camera uh, and I believe you heard me say earlier that I have a 35 millimeter lens and it turns out uh, either my lens or Unreal's internal lens is just a little bit off, so I had to tweak it up to 37 millimeters eventually to get it to line up perfectly. Um, this is something you're just going to have to do manually. And uh, that's how you set up your, the camera to match whatever camera you have. Okay, earlier I mentioned the talent marker. Uh, this guy here is a stand-in for where you want your person to stand or where you want them to appear in the Unreal level. Um, so you can take this and move it anywhere and all of the garbage mats and everything that you need to make uh, this guy come up correctly will just follow him around. So you don't have to move your camera in the real world, you just have to move this marker to another spot in the virtual world. Um, the way this works is all of the uh, different pieces of the composite are attached to this one talent marker object. And by attach, if you're not familiar with Unreal, if you go over to an object like, say, the cartoon hammer, there's actually a thing here that says attach to, and then you would choose the talent marker to attach it. So I've already attached the cartoon hammer, the garbage mat piece, and the two garbage mat pieces to the marker so that they'll follow it around. Now, if I want to shoot a scene at a different part of this level, I can just move this there and everything will just will continue to work. Now I'll give you a quick view of how the tracking system is working. So the talent marker is where most of the tracking happens for the camera. Uh, if you look at the talent marker asset down here, there'll be a blueprint, and it looks like this. Now what this does, the first part gets a value that I've stored in a global object, telling everything in this system how many frames to delay the tracking information. The reason for this is that the tracking information comes right into Unreal really quickly, almost completely real time. 
but the video is a little bit delayed because it takes time to digitize the video and shovel it through the computer uh, and get it to Unreal. So typically you have to delay the tracking data a few frames so that when the tracking information meets up with the live video, they'll be in sync. For my setup here, which is running at 60 hertz, I have to delay it about six frames. So this here implements what's called a first in, first out queue. It takes the current position of the tracker, puts it down in the back of the array, in this case about six frames down, uh, and then it takes the whatever's at the front of the queue, the zero element, and pulls that out. So that gives you a continuous delay of six frames. Then this last block takes the a reference to the camera rig, which I'll show you in a moment, and it pushes that delayed position over to the tr to the camera so that it'll be in the right place when the video gets to it. Now I've got the camera rig selected. Um, basically you can think of this as a 3D model of what's sitting on top of my tripod, so that includes the camera, the tracker, and all the little bits of mechanical stuff that hold it all together. I'll show you that more later. Uh, the only thing you really have to know about the camera rig is that uh, the tracker information comes in here and the camera component has an offset that tells the system how far the tracker is away from the camera because you can't mark, mount them right on top of each other. Just to show you what it looks like when things are actually running got the uh, project running now and the camera rig is showing up right down here. And you can see that the position, rotation, and all that other information is constantly changing. Uh, it, only by a little bit though because right now the camera is stationary. So just to give you an idea what the whole thing looks like, I backed off with my cell phone camera. This is the entire studio. Um, it's kind of large, but you really don't need it to be this large. You can get away with something as little as five or six feet wide as long as you uh, don't want your talent to move around too much. I'm using a big space because I had one available and I wanted to be able to walk back and forth in the videos. You can see that I'm only really using light from the windows which are behind me, the lights in the ceiling, and the two video lights to the left and the right. This is the actual camera tracking rig. You can see a Sony camera on the front with a 35 millimeter lens, uh, a Vive tracker mounted behind it, and the whole thing is bolted to a plate. Uh, I found that having the tracker above the camera like this works much better than any other location I could put it in. I tried it behind the camera and to the side of the camera, and you always got some blocking of the view of the camera to the sensors. You could use pretty much any kind of a camera, a DSLR or a pocket camera. And for convenience, if your camera happens to have a shoe on the top of it for a flash, if you've got the right kind of adapter, you could just stick the tracker on top of that. Now, I have everything hardwired to the computer. Um, the Vive trackers are actually wireless, and so you can unplug that cable and uh, then you don't have as many wires laying around. The other thing you need to know about is, I mentioned earlier in the uh, camera rig object inside of Unreal, you had to put the offset of the tracker from the camera. Uh, you can see in front of me here, the camera has a little marker here that shows where the film plane is. So the offset that you will need to use, whatever rig you come up with for holding the tracker and the camera together, you want to measure from the center of the lens at this spot back to here and up to the base of the tracker. And then you need to put that information inside of the Unreal camera rig object.